with rescue teams checking for anyone. I didn't go that way. It's going to take years for this to cool down. Yes. We don't know if we're going to have a home. More than 4,000 people have fled with rescue teams. Underneath the calm town of Grindavik in Iceland, a hazardous situation is unfolding. Recent seismic activity has rattled the area, forcing residents to flee as the ground trembles. The Iceland 100-foot volcano crack is about to cause the biggest eruption in Europe. Experts have varying opinions on the impending outcome, leaving the lives and futures of locals hanging in uncertainty. But could this catastrophic event darken Europe in a way not witnessed for many years, causing disruptions and testing the limits of human endurance? Join us as we explore the imminent colossal eruption threat posed by Iceland's 100-foot volcano crack, set to be the largest in Europe. Grindavik's urgent exodus amidst volcanic threat. Grindavik, a beautiful town in southwest Iceland, has been facing a lot of tremors from the ground lately. People are worried that a volcano might erupt soon, since October 24, 2023. There have been more than a thousand earthquakes in a short time. Things got intense with 800 earthquakes in just one day. The authorities in Iceland told everyone to leave their homes quickly because there's a long river of magma, about 15 kilometers long, moving underground. This magma river is a big danger, so everyone in Grindavik had to go. Even though they tried to let people get important stuff from their homes, it's too risky to go back because the situation is still very dangerous. The tremors and continuous earthquakes have made the town too unsafe for people to live in. Iceland has a history of volcanoes that have changed how the land looks. For centuries, these eruptions have affected the landscape and the people who lived there. The reason Iceland has so many volcanoes is because of how the Earth's surface is made there. The plates under the ground, called the Eurasian and North American tectonic plates, meet in Iceland, making it a very shaky and dangerous place. Iceland has faced some really big volcanic eruptions that have made a lasting impact, but Icelanders have always been strong in the face of these natural disasters. They've learned to adapt and survive through tough times caused by volcanoes. The worry about Grindavik's possible eruption fits into this history of dealing with Iceland's volcanic nature. Southwest Iceland has experienced a worrying increase in tremors from the ground, with more than a thousand tremors happening recently. These tremors, especially in Grindavik, have made people in the area very scared about a possible volcano eruption. Because the tremors got stronger and more frequent, the authorities in Iceland quickly told everyone in Grindavik to leave. At first, they allowed people to quickly get important things from their homes, but things got worse so fast that they had to stop people from going back for their stuff. This evacuation happened urgently because the tremors showed how dangerous it was. There's a 15 kilometer long river of magma moving under the land. Experts are apprehensive about this magma because it's active and could lead to a volcanic eruption. Authorities are urgently alerting the public about the gravity and immediacy of the threat posed by the significant and active magma flow beneath the delicate ground in southwest Iceland. The deceptive calm before Iceland's volcanic storm. Even though the number of earthquakes has decreased lately, scientists are still paying a lot of attention to the area because of what this change might mean. This decrease in earthquakes, even if it seems like a good thing because there are fewer tremors, needs to be looked at very carefully. Scientists are studying this decrease very closely. They're saying that just because the seismic activities have lessened, it doesn't mean the danger has gone away. Volcano experts are pointing out that the situation is still very unstable. They're saying that even if there are fewer earthquakes, it could mean a different phase in how the volcano works. It might show that the magma under the ground is slowly moving up toward the surface. To understand what might happen next, Experts are comparing what's happening now with past volcanic events in Iceland. They're saying that looking at these comparisons helps them understand how big the eruption might be and what kind of impact it could have on society, the environment, and the economy. A crucial point in understanding the upcoming volcanic threat is the formation of a magma tunnel, or dike, under the affected area. This vertical channel of molten rock rising from deep below brings multiple risks. The observations show that this tunnel of magma 
is rapidly getting bigger and bulging, which makes everyone worry more about a possible eruption. Its location and size make experts afraid that a big volcanic event might happen. The danger isn't just around the tunnel itself. Nearby towns and important buildings are also at risk. Authorities are really worried about what might happen to buildings and important things like electricity and water if the lava flows out. They're scared that roads, power lines, and homes could be destroyed by the lava. This is making the situation very urgent. The people in the area acted quickly and together when they were told to leave. They evacuated fast and found places to stay. Shelters and help were set up to support everyone who had to leave their homes. People have come together, offering their homes and resources to help those affected. It's a time when everyone is supporting each other in the face of this looming crisis. Some people who are watching from outside might doubt how serious the situation is, but the urgency and actions being taken are not without reason. The Laki Catastrophe. Iceland has a history marked by major volcanic eruptions that deeply impacted the land and the people living there. One of the most devastating events was the Laki eruption, also called the Skaftar fires. This eruption, happening from 1783 to 1784, came from the Laki fissure system and the nearby Grimsvatn volcano, causing huge changes for Iceland and beyond. It all started on June 8, 1783, when cracks in the Earth's surface opened up in the southern part of Iceland. A massive amount of hot lava poured out, covering a huge area of about 565 square kilometers. The flowing lava destroyed farmlands, towns, and fields, making them empty and impossible to live in. Whole villages were wiped out, and many people lost their homes and their way of making a living. But the lava wasn't the only problem. The eruption released a lot of dangerous gases like sulfur dioxide and fluorine compounds into the air. These toxic gases spread out from the cracks, covering the skies with a thick haze. This poisonous cloud didn't just stay in Iceland, it also affected Europe and other places. It caused strange changes in the weather and the atmosphere, making things quite worrisome for people beyond Iceland's borders. The toxic gases from the eruption had terrible effects on the environment and living things. These poisonous fumes harmed crops and plants, leading to widespread failures in farming. Plants dried up, crops didn't grow well, and the once fertile lands became empty, causing a shortage of food. This scarcity led to hunger and starvation for people and animals. There wasn't enough food, and many animals died, making things even worse for the communities. The impact of the Laki eruption wasn't just local, it affected the whole world. The sulfur dioxide released into the air changes the climate globally. It caused weird weather changes, especially in the northern hemisphere, creating what's called the Laki haze winter. There were big drops in temperature, crop failures, and strange weather for years in different parts of the world after the eruption. The eruption caused a huge loss of human life in Iceland. It's estimated that a big part of Iceland's population died because of the eruption or the hunger and problems that came after it. The society in Iceland was deeply affected, and it was really hard for the communities to recover after such a disaster. However, despite the terrible impacts, the Laki eruption helped scientists learn a lot more about how volcanoes affect the world. The things scientists saw during and after the eruption helped them understand how volcanoes can change the environment the climate and human society. This knowledge has been crucial for preparing and dealing with volcanic eruptions all around the world. Hekla Volcano, Iceland's Mighty and Active Giant. Hekla is one of Iceland's most active and powerful volcanoes, making a lasting impact on both the country's land and its culture. It erupts about once every 10 years and has a rich history of major eruptions, notably in 1104, 1693, 1845, and more recent ones in the 20th century. These eruptions have solidified Hecla's reputation as a force of nature to be feared and respected. Located in southern Iceland, Hecla has been the center of many myths and legends, often being called the gateway to hell during medieval times. It's a stratovolcano, which means it's shaped like a steep cone, rising about 1,491 meters high. The contrast between its snow-covered peak and the fiery eruptions it produces shows the dual nature of Iceland's natural wonders. 
Hecla's eruptions have been documented for more than a thousand years. The eruption in 1104 reshaped the area and showed the immense power of Hecla, affecting both the local environment and Iceland's overall geological processes. Moving forward to the 17th century, the eruption in 1693 was another significant event in Hecla's history. It had widespread effects, not just in the nearby area, but also on Icelandic society as a whole. Throughout history, Hecla's eruptions have been woven into Iceland's cultural stories, influencing folklore, literature, and even how people think about the island. Moving into the 19th century, Hecla showed its power once more through the eruption of 1845. This event, like earlier ones, changed the landscape with lava and ash, proving how powerful nature can be. As the 20th century began, Hecla kept erupting regularly, not just as geological events, but also as social and scientific happenings. Researchers and scientists became interested in understanding volcanic activity more deeply because of Hecla's eruptions. In the 20th century, one eruption in particular caught global attention, the one in 1947. This eruption was well documented and helped scientists learn more about how volcanoes behave, improving their understanding of how eruptions happen. But that's not all. The Katla eruption. Katla, a powerful volcano nestled in the south of Iceland, showcases the country's immense geological significance. Known for its massive eruptions, Katla's history has left a lasting impact on Iceland's land and the memories of its people. This volcano, hidden under the Myrtles Jokul glacier, is like a sleeping giant that occasionally wakes up. Despite its striking appearance with a glacier covering its peak, Katla has a history of potentially devastating eruptions that have echoed through the ages. Katla's eruptions are remembered in Icelandic history for their huge scale and impact. The eruption in 1311, filled with myths and legends, is remembered as a catastrophic event that covered vast areas with ash and volcanic debris. Its effects were felt across Europe, affecting climate patterns and causing significant environmental changes due to the ash cloud. In 1660, Katla became active again, showing its immense power by sending ash and smoke high into the sky, causing widespread destruction. The fallout from this eruption affected not just Iceland, but also had global implications on climate patterns. In more recent times, in 1918, Katla erupted once more. This eruption released a huge amount of ash and lava, changing the landscape and leaving a lasting impact on the memories of the Icelandic people. Katla's eruptions aren't just geological events, they're deeply woven into Icelandic culture and life. The potential for a major eruption from Katla brings both wonder and fear to the people. The aftermath could cause a lot of destruction, disrupt air travel with ash clouds, and bring the risk of glacial flooding, called Jokullaups. Scientists and experts keep a close eye on Katla, using advanced technology to understand its signals and predict possible eruptions. The Barterbunga Eruption In Icelandic geological history, the Barterbunga volcano holds a significant place, both feared and respected. Its eruptions have shaped the land and fascinated those who study Iceland's ever-changing geology. One notable eruption, happening in 2014, drew global attention to the remote area of Holohraun, showcasing a breathtaking display of fiery natural forces that left a lasting mark on Iceland's geological and environmental story. Even before the 2014 events, Barterbunga had been closely watched by scientists monitoring seismic activity in the area. Hidden under the massive Vatnajökull ice cap, this stratovolcano had been showing signs of activity, with tremors indicating a geological event was likely to happen soon. The Icelandic Meteorological Office and the University of Iceland's Institute of Earth Sciences diligently tracked the increasing activity, preparing for the eruption that seemed ready to occur. On August 16, 2014, the ground cracked open in Holuhraun, north of Vatnajökull, sparking an eruption that fascinated the world. Holuhraun, a vast lava field, became the stage for a stunning natural spectacle. The eruption didn't happen directly under the ice cap, so it didn't cause the potentially disastrous flooding known as a Jokullaup. However, its effects reached far beyond Iceland's borders. 
As Bardarbunga erupted, molten rock burst out, creating a breathtaking display of fire in the Icelandic sky. The lava flows, both magnificent and menacing, snaked across the desolate landscape. Holuhraun, previously a mostly empty area, underwent a remarkable change, with rivers of molten rock forming intricate patterns on the ancient canvas of hardened lava. The amount of lava produced during the eruption was immense. By February 2015, the lava field covered an area of about 85 square kilometers, making it the largest basaltic lava flow in Iceland since the Laki eruption of 1783 to 1784. Holuhraun, once a barren space, now boasted a rough landscape made of hardened lava. The Bardarbunga eruption wasn't just about the mesmerizing lava, it also released large amounts of volcanic gases into the air. Sulfur dioxide spreads into the sky, creating worrying plumes that pose environmental challenges. These gas emissions affected the air quality in Iceland and raised concerns about health risks leading authorities to monitor and manage the dangers for the population. Internationally, the volcanic gases from Bardarbunga's eruption created issues for air travel. While not as disruptive as the Ejafjallajökull eruption in 2010, which caused widespread airspace closures, the 2014 events raised concerns. European aviation authorities closely watched how the volcanic ash spread, putting restrictions in place when needed to keep air travel safe. The 2014 Bardarbunga eruption showed the close link between Bardarbunga and the nearby subglacial volcano Grimsvatn. When Bardarbunga erupted, changes in pressure between their magma chambers caused more activity at Grimsvatn. This highlighted the complex dance of geological forces deep beneath the Earth's surface. After the 2014 eruptions, Iceland's land showed both the damage caused by nature's power and its incredible ability to recover. Holuhraun, once an empty area, slowly started to show signs of nature's resilience. Mosses and lichens, the first plants to grow on the lava fields, began the slow but sure process of environmental recovery. The effects of the eruption went beyond just changing the land. It made people think about how Iceland is vulnerable to these forces that shape its unique geology. It also emphasized how important it is for countries to work together to watch out for and handle the risks linked to volcanic activity, as these eruptions often affect more than just one country. The Grimsvatn Eruption Grimsvatn, located under the Vatnajökull ice cap in southeastern Iceland, is another of the island's most active and powerful volcanoes. Throughout history, its frequent and intense eruptions have made a significant mark in Iceland's geological records. This volcanic giant erupts regularly, leaving a lasting impact on the nearby land and beyond. Its notable eruptions in 2011, 2004, and 1998 showcase its consistent unpredictability, drawing interest from both scientists and the public. The 2011 eruption displayed nature's immense power, starting beneath the Vatnajökull ice cap. The clash between molten lava and the glacier created huge plumes of ash and steam that shot into the sky. The resulting ash cloud disrupted air travel in Europe and caused uncertainty across the continent. Despite the disruption, this event offered scientists a rare chance to study how ice and fire interact during subglacial eruptions, revealing the complexities involved. The eruptions in 2004 and 1998 although less globally impactful, also showed incredible force and geological marvels. Each eruption formed new paths of flowing lava, shaping the nearby landscape and leaving behind diverse and rugged terrains. Grimsvatn's history of eruptions spans centuries, leaving behind a story of explosive events that have shaped Iceland's past. Through generations, Tales have recounted the awe-inspiring but often devastating eruptions that mark Iceland's geological heritage. The volcano's unpredictability stems from its location on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, where tectonic plates are in constant movement. The merging of the North American and Eurasian plates under Iceland creates an environment ideal for volcanic activity, with Grimsvatn as a prominent example of this dynamic landscape. In recent years, scientific attention on Grimsvatn has grown employing advanced tools to decode its mysterious behavior. 
Seismometers placed across the region detect subtle tremors, signaling the volcano's activity. Satellite imagery tracks changes in the landscape before eruptions. Studies of volcanic gases and rocks provide vital insights into how the volcano works, aiding in predicting and understanding its eruptions. The Ijefjallajökull eruption. In the spring of 2010, Ijefjallajökull, a volcano capped with a glacier in Iceland, erupted unexpectedly, triggering a series of events that had a huge impact across Europe and beyond. This seemingly isolated volcanic activity quickly turned into a major international crisis, disrupting air travel and affecting millions of travelers. Signs of the eruption began on March 2010, when seismic activity beneath Ejafjala Yokul indicated that magma was moving beneath the surface. On April 14, explosive eruptions shattered the ice covering the volcano, sending ash and steam high into the sky. The interaction between molten lava and the glacier created massive ash clouds, causing an unprecedented event and creating logistical problems for aviation authorities. The eruption had immediate and widespread consequences. The ash clouds, carried by winds, spread across northern Europe, reaching altitudes where aeroplanes typically fly. European air traffic control authorities were worried that the abrasive volcanic ash could damage jet engines so they decided to close airspace over a large part of the continent. This decision was made to prioritize safety, as volcanic ash contains tiny particles that can melt inside aircraft engines and lead to engine failure. When the airspace closed due to the eruption, it caused big problems that affected a lot of people and businesses. Airports from London to Stockholm had to stop flights, leaving travelers stuck and delaying shipments. This disruption didn't just impact Europe, but also flights going across the Atlantic and to other faraway places. Airlines lost a lot of money, estimating they were losing millions every day because they couldn't fly their planes. Passengers found themselves stuck in airports, hotels, and train stations, completely changing their plans because of something unexpected from nature. The situation quickly turned into a big problem to solve. People who were stuck tried to find other ways to get where they needed to go. They started using trains, buses, and ferries, doing whatever they could to reach their destinations as quickly as possible. Countries even brought out more buses and trains to handle the sudden increase in people looking for different ways to travel. However, it was hard for airlines and authorities to decide when it would be safe to start flying again because the ash cloud from the volcano moved around in unpredictable ways. It made it tough to know how much risk there was and when it would be okay to open the airspace again. Scientists were keeping a close eye on the eruption. They were studying the data and trying to figure out how the ash would spread in the air. They were using computer models to guess where the ash would go, to help the people in charge of aviation safety. However, because the ash behaved differently depending on the wind and how the volcano was acting, it was really hard to predict exactly where it would go and how thick it would be. This made it tricky to decide when it would be safe to start flying again without risking the planes and passengers. As the volcano calmed down and the ash clouds spread out, the restrictions on airspace were slowly lifted. But letting flights start again was done very carefully. Airlines did test flights and took extra safety steps to make sure there wasn't too much volcanic ash that could be dangerous for planes. Gauging the potential devastation of Grindavik's wrath. When thinking about the Grindavik eruption, many things could determine how much damage it might cause. A big part of it is where and how strong the eruption happens. If the eruption is close to where people live, it could damage buildings and roads, and it could be dangerous for the people there. The ash that comes out of the volcano can mess up air travel, closing airports and causing problems for planes flying nearby. Depending on how thick and widespread the ash cloud is, it might even affect flights that go between regions or even continents. This could lead to cancelled flights and a lot of money lost for airlines. The lava that flows out can also wreck buildings, roads, and things like electricity and water systems. If it gets to where people live, it could destroy their homes and other important places. The gases that come out during an eruption can make the air bad to breathe, which is risky for people nearby. This might mean they have to leave their homes for a while, or use things to protect themselves from breathing in bad air. Eruptions can also mess up the environment. 
They might harm plants and animals, mess with farming, and make water not safe to use. This can hurt the environment, how much food can be grown, and how clean the water is. All these things can affect how people make a living and how the economy works in that area. Iceland has faced volcanic eruptions before and has strong plans in place to handle emergencies like this. But depending on how big the Grindavik eruption is and where it happens, the damage could be different. Right now, the most important thing is to keep people safe and make sure everything important keeps working. But if the eruption causes a lot of damage, then things would change a lot. At first, the focus is on keeping everyone safe and making sure essential services like electricity and water keep running smoothly. But if the damage ends up being big, then it's going to need a much bigger response and recovery effort. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. The Iceland 100-foot volcano crack is about to cause the biggest eruption in Europe. Fear grips as tremors and quakes multiply, signaling an ominous threat. The recent surge of over a thousand earthquakes, climaxing with an alarming 800 in a single day, paints a foreboding picture. Authorities' urgent directives forced the evacuation of Grindavik, haunted by a menacing 15-kilometer magma river lurking beneath. Despite attempts for retrieval, the risk remains too high for residents to re-enter. Why this sudden surge? Iceland's geography, where colliding tectonic plates create an unstable environment, fosters its volcanic heritage. This latest upheaval adds to a saga of historical eruptions altering landscapes and livelihoods. Is it nature's capriciousness or a dire warning? Southwest Iceland's relentless tremors intensify fears of a looming volcanic outburst. Experts sound the alarm, cautioning about the active magma's volatility, raising concerns of imminent eruption. Icelanders, resilient from enduring past volcanic turmoil, now face a new chapter, bracing against nature's fury. As uncertainty looms, will swift action avert catastrophe? Or will this natural force rewrite Iceland's landscape once more? Let us know what you think about what we just showed you. Experts on edge as magma's moves echo. Uncertainty. Volcano experts have been watching the situation in southwest Iceland very closely. They've been talking a lot about the recent tremors from the ground and how the magma is moving. This suggests that there's a higher chance of a volcano erupting. These experts have thought about different scenarios for the eruption. They've considered the possibility of a big eruption or a smaller one that could still cause problems. Even though the tremors have decreased a bit, they still think there's a good chance of a smaller eruption happening. The experts are reminding everyone that volcanoes can be very unpredictable, so it's important to keep paying attention and being ready. They're using advanced technology to watch the volcano. They have tools on the ground and even satellites in space helping them see how the magma is moving and where it's going. This helps them make decisions about when to evacuate people and how to lower the risks. As of November 26, around 90% of the magma in Svartsengi has turned solid. But one expert, Professor Magnus Tumi Gudmundsson from the University of Iceland, says there's still a chance that more magma might gather and start moving up toward the surface. Right now, experts think that if there's an eruption, it will likely happen to the east of Silingarfell. But this might change depending on what happens next. They're warning that things could still go very wrong. The situation is still pretty complicated. The ground rise in Svartsengi has slowed down, and it might not go back to its previous level. This means that different things might happen soon. Goodmanson is saying that pressure could start to build up. This makes the area very fragile, especially for power plants in places where volcanoes might erupt. There are worries about how safe buildings and towns close to the volcano are. Experts are thinking about ways to try and stop the lava from reaching towns by cooling it down. But they know this could be risky, especially after the eruption ends. They're concerned about how the eruption might affect power plants and the people living nearby. No matter what happens next, the fact that volcanoes are so unpredictable means that everyone, both the authorities and the people living there, needs to stay ready and be careful. Grindavik's Volcanic Tightrope The volcanic threat in Grindavik has created many tough challenges for the authorities. The biggest challenge is finding the right balance between acting quickly to keep everyone safe and making sure the residents are okay. 
It's been hard to evacuate people fast because the ground keeps shaking and nobody knows for sure when or how big the eruption might be. They've been working hard to get ready so that if it does erupt, the damage will be as little as possible. They're reinforcing important buildings and things like electricity and water systems to try and protect them from the lava. They're also using advanced technology to watch the volcano all the time. This helps them warn people quickly if something dangerous might happen. They've made plans for different situations, like how to move people out of the way if they're in danger, and how to make sure everyone knows what to do in case of an eruption. The authorities are working closely with the communities to make sure everyone knows what's happening and can work together if the danger gets worse. These plans they've made can change quickly to fit the situation and make sure everyone stays safe. The situation in Grindavik keeps changing, and it's hard to know for sure what might happen next. Depending on how the ground keeps shaking and how the magma under the ground moves, different things could happen. There's a chance of a big eruption causing a lot of problems, or maybe a smaller eruption that they can manage because they're getting ready. It all depends on how the experts keep an eye on the tremors and the magma moving underground. Even though the tremors have slowed down a bit, the molten rock is still moving, which means there's still a risk. Whether it's a big eruption or a smaller one, everyone needs to stay alert and ready and follow the safety instructions given by the authorities. Iceland has faced natural disasters before, especially volcanoes, but they're prepared. They have good plans and use advanced technology to keep an eye on things. People, scientists, and the government are all working together to get ready and handle whatever might come. Iceland has shown it can handle tough situations before, and they're ready to face this challenge too. But right now, we can't be sure about what's going to happen next. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.